Hi, I wanted to talk about a young lady uh, that presented me a few weeks ago. She's 18 years of age. The presenting problem was bilateral flexible flat foot. A uh, very active lady, uh, performing figure skating, running, walking in gym. Uh, the pain is mainly located in the medial longitudinal arches, but can affect uh, the entire foot bilaterally. Uh, the pain will last after activity, and if the activity was quite substantial, she'll have um, difficulty walking the next day. Uh, this issue has been occurring since the age of 10. Uh, she has been prescribed orthoses in the past, uh, which unfortunately didn't help relieve symptoms. And there was also difficulty not being able to wear them without um, shoes, obviously. I've put some images up of, um, of her in static stance, so you can see the inverted calcaneus, the drop in the transfer, um, the longitudinal arch. Uh, not a lot of um, forefoot abduction. I want to discuss the subtalar joint arthroresis plug. Um, not so much the surgery, but I have included this in the, the video of the actual procedure. Um, but what it's like post-surgery. So online you can get a lot of information about how it realigns the lower limb um, and even surgical, how the, the procedure is performed surgically, but there doesn't seem to be that much about the post-op recovery. Uh, so later in the video um, you'll see what it's like two weeks post um, arthroresis implantation. There is a, a fair bit to go through in the post-op recovery period. Uh, which I wanted podiatrists and, and patients um, aware of, you know, what actually goes on. Hopefully I'll be able to follow this video up after about 6 to 12 weeks, um, just to show you what it's like with the patient walking um, and discussing pain levels and all that type of stuff. Alright, let's get into it. Um, yep. So we've got an 18, 19 year old girl who um, has symptomatic flexible flat feet. She's used orthotics previously, quite a number of them, um, but it's still symptomatic. So she's still getting ankle and um, arch pain. So if we have a look at her range of motion, it's okay if we come around here. So that is her movement at the moment. And we are going to try to limit quite a bit of that with the subtalar joint arthroresis. All right, so we're going to make a small incision over sinus tarsi. There's no tourniquet, so we'll see a little bit of bleeding. Shouldn't be too much though. So one's through the skin. We can go through the subcutaneous tissue. And just spread that aside. And then we are going to release the interosseous ligament that connects the talus and the calcaneus. Then we've got the guide wire. We insert that in. And you can see now if we come immediately. Okay, you can see it's poking through. So just above the sastum tackle and tail line, interosseous ligaments have been disrupted. Now we're going to get a sizer. We'll start with the say a size five. Size five, nine. Okay. Size five. Okay. And just take that into there. Stabilise the rear foot. Okay, so the size is in there. If we come back around this way and we have a look at the movement now, you can see before the foot was really swinging outwards quite a bit with eversion and abduction, but now that's been limited quite a bit. Now that's a size 5, now let's compare it to a size 6. We'll hold the guide wire. And if we compare it again, and it's even holding it even more firm. 
You can see that when it comes through, it really doesn't want to go around to the side at all. It just also flexes up. And I reckon we should go with the six, give her as much support as we can. Six. Five, six. So you can see without even a tourniquet, really doesn't bleed at all. The, these are the sizes mm -hmm. and that's the actual implant that will be inserted into the subtalar arthrosis. It gives you an idea as to the size of the implant when we're testing the foot. Arthrosis looks like that, and that's the end there. That's what it looks like through here. Okay, then we've got the driver. Now, thankfully, the sinus canalis really only goes in one way, so it's not very, it's not really any other way it can go except that that way, following the god way. With a maximally pronated subtalar joint, when the subtalar joint is brought back to neutral, it's quite common to see uh, the development of a forefoot supernatus. Post surgery, we see this with a subtalar joint arthrosis, and it can be over exaggerated again when there is um, overexertion of the tibialis anterior tendon. It uh, contributes to elevation of the first ray and, and the development of that forefoot supernatus. Along with the elevation of the first ray, sometimes you can also see some intoing um, that occurs with it. The, the amount of intoing that's present is also important because it can exaggerate the amount of subtalar joint supination that's actually occurring. Um, it's very important also to look at the relaxed calcaneal stance position to make sure that the calcaneus is slightly everted or perpendicular but never inverted. It's really hard to walk around with an inverted calcaneus. We can minimize the amount of forefoot supernatus um, by strapping the first ray down, which you'll see uh, a little bit later in the video. Uh, it's also important post-surgery that these patients uh, continue to stretch their calf muscles and go through some gait training uh, gradually increasing their stride length and getting used to heel towing uh, once again. Improvement in gluteal muscle strength is very important and over time uh, improvement in overall balance. Trying to keep the feet straight, that's it. And come back. How much pain are you in? Now eventually, you will start to relax some of those muscles. So when you're standing there now, your muscles relax. But when you walk, you tense up a muscle at the front. And I'm going to get you to walk up and back for me again. Now your brother may say, can you see how the big toe is coming off the ground a little bit? Yeah. That's that muscle. Now when you tense that and you try to keep the big toe off the ground, guess what it does to your feet? 
wants to turn them inwards. Okay? okay. So try to flatten out that foot. That's it. Exactly. And walking back on again. Now you're going to do that nice and slow. There's no rush. It's not a race. Okay? So try to, that's it. Relax the front of the foot. Relax that muscle. Keeping the feet nice and straight. How do you feel in the arch? You're good. It's just the outside. It's the outside, yeah. I feel like a push. Gotcha. Um, compared to before the op, you're very straight. You're really yeah. straight. The back of your um, your heels are straight. Your arch, well, you've got an arch now. But we just need to relax that muscle spasm. Yeah. You haven't been up like that forever, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. Foot down. You're going to use a bit of tape. You can get this from, uh, from any pharmacy. And what we're going to do is we're going to start on the top. So you know how you want to do this to your foot? Everyone wants to do that. What I want you to do is push that bone down and your big toe up, okay? And then just strap it into your arch and coming up here. And cutting the excess just like that. So if we demonstrate on this side, you're gonna get a bit of tape like that. Start on the top that bone, push it down with your fingers, you push um, and lift the big toe joint up, and then go into the arch, and then up on the other side, and that will give you some downwards force, and hopefully limit the amount if you're trying to lift it up. So when you message me, Hopefully in the next couple of weeks or so, you, you will be walking a lot, lot better. Well, each week you will walk a lot better. So just get some of that tape. And I'm going to see you in about a month anyway. Thank you.